Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the Xtool M1 rotary attachment. So we will be engraving a tumbler. Here is one of the results that I have tested so far. And I'm using this tumbler from Walmart. I'm not sure if it's painted or powder coated, but this video will kind of show you how to troubleshoot and figure out your settings and hopefully get you in a good place where you can experiment with different types of tumblers. So this is a tumbler. I will link it in the video description so that you know exactly what I used and then hopefully you can replicate it using the settings that I'm going to provide in today's video. This is the rotary attachment. It is sold separately if you didn't buy the pro kit. So if you are thinking, oh shoot, I didn't get that, you can purchase it separately as an add-on. So you can add it and then plug it into the back of your machine. Straight out of the box, it looks just like this. this. This is how it's set up. So I'm not going to make adjustments to that because I want this to be a tutorial where you can follow along and straight out of the box, this is how this was already assembled. And then you have this leveling gadget that's really smooth and it just helps you level out your tumblers. This will plug into our machine, which I will show you a little later on. And I'm going to show you kind of how to determine what settings you need to use for this. So our cup is here. I have an additional one with more settings, more trials. And in the box, you have this measuring tape. So we're going to place the measuring tape around the part that we're engraving on. Typically, it's the highest point of your cup. And it will have this readout, which shows you all the different settings on how you need to set up your attachment. So I'll show you what this means. The first one, it says riser gear. We're using the roller and it shows there's three different options, alpha, beta, and gamma, if I know my Greek alphabet well enough. So if you have a shorter item, your risers, your wooden block risers, would only have to be turned to the A level or the alpha level. And if, they're, if the object's a little bit taller, you'll need to turn it to the beta. And if it's as tall as ours, you'll need it to be on the gamma setting. Is that, is that the why? I don't know. You'll have to correct me in the comments if it's not. <laughs> so we need to make sure that our risers are set to the highest option. And then our rotary gear rollers, they need to be set at the C mark. So we need to make sure that it's wide enough to roll our object. Okay, so that is what this measuring tape tells you. And how we'll load our tumbler is we'll place it on our rollers and we want the highest point to be under the laser, which I will show you. And then the leveling gadget goes at the end of the cup and you want this plane to be as even as you can. Of course, Xtool thought of everything, so they did provide a little level in the kit. And so you can watch as I turn the knob I can level this out, which is so cool. I just, I feel like that they really thought of everything. So I want to make sure that my level is on the place where I'm engraving and I'll level it out so that in the laser, I have a nice level plane to engrave and my image won't get warped. So that's the basic setup. Now let's bring this over to the laser so you can see what I've done on the laser side. So here's a look at the laser. I have already removed the base of the laser and I think I have video footage of that. I'll double check, but you will unscrew the plate right here. There's screw holes. There's one, two, three, four, five screws. And you'll just unscrew all of those. And then you can push up on the bottom and pop it out. So I've already removed the base and I just set it underneath the laser just to protect my work surface. And then I have my laser up on the risers already. So if I lift this one here, the different settings are on each of the sides of the block. So the lowest setting would be this alpha setting. The next one would be the beta. And then the tallest, the one that we're using is that gamma setting. So you just lift up your machine. You see this little foot right here. We'll lift up and drop it into the foot. And it's not the most steady. I was a little nervous because I was worried it was gonna slip off. So just be careful that you're on a sturdy platform 
and all of the feet are inside those little holes. Okay, so we have this up on the risers. Now we can install the rotary tool. One thing I didn't mention when you take your rotary rollers out of the box, you do need to plug in this cable. So on the back of the attachment, you'll plug this in. And then the opposite end, we'll plug this into our laser. So what I did is I just fed it under the bottom. Placed my rollers. Sorry, this is a little difficult to see. I am doing this after my machine is on the risers already, so I'm just going to plug that in blindly from the back, but you'll plug it in and then screw the ring tight around it. All right, we're all set up, so I'm going to power on the machine from the back. You'll see it light up. Sometimes it makes a little noise. All right, so I have a practice tumbler. I definitely recommend that you have a practice tumbler so that you don't feel defeated when you're not getting those perfect settings right out of the gate. So to figure out where we're going to place our design, I recommend using some type of masking tape, blue tape, regular masking, and determining how far from the lip of your cup you wanna be. Another thing to note that I didn't consider was that when you placed your lid on, some tumblers, they only turn the drinking area a certain way. So if you're trying to line up your design with that, you may want to screw your lid on, my lid's right here, and then you can line up your design to where your spout is. I couldn't turn this any other way, so that bugged me originally when I placed my design over here. So then I lined up my next round with that. So you may wanna place your lid, or if you have a logo that you're trying to line up with, it gets a little bit more complicated, so just be aware of where we're going to tape so that you know where to align. Okay, so I have my lid, and if you're trying to align your design to that lid, you'll wanna tape with your lid on, potentially, but since I'm just going to engrave in this opening, I'm just going to tape an area where I know I'm safe to engrave. So depending on how far you want your design, you want to tape your blue tape with the bottom as the indication point where you can start your design. You'll want this line to be as straight as possible because we're going to use that as an edge to line up our design. So I just made sure that it was equal all the way around. It's a little off right there, so we'll drop that down a little bit. I do recommend adding some tape on the sides. If you know exactly where you want your design to be or you know how big it is, you can tape it perfectly. I recommend that you tape on the right side for sure. And the reason that I want you to tape on the right side is because when the laser is dropped down onto your cup, it starts on the right side and then when it engraves, it rolls to the left and will end up on this side. So we're going to place our tape and then the laser will indicate where we're gonna start our design. So I know that I'm safe to engrave within this area. So that's what my tape is representing. All right, so we're going to start by placing the tumbler in the laser bed. So I have the rollers and the leveler at the bottom. We're going to place our tumbler and we want the red light to be at the highest point of our tumbler. So here's the red light there. And we want to ensure that our tumbler is level. So that looks pretty good. If it wasn't level, I can use the knob to adjust it and make sure it's level. Now, something to note is that when you set the focus on your tumbler, the red light is indicated by a yellow line. The way that it works is you can set that yellow line and your design will start on this side and then it will engrave and roll this way. So you want to have your red dot really at the start of your design. Okay, so we'll close that up and then we'll head over to the software. So here I am in the creative space and I have it set to laser cylindrical. So if it looks like this, you'll wanna change your setting to laser cylindrical. Now the yellow line is all the way over here and I did tell you that's where the red dot is, but you have to set focus before it will move. So if you watch this, 
there's this auto measure right here. Click on that and we'll use that red light to determine the distance from your tumbler. So it says it's 6.6 .6 millimeters from my tumbler. And then that line moved. So where that red light is, is now where the start of that line is. Okay, so now that you see this in the software, let's go back over and look at the laser one more time. I also should note that if it does not auto measure properly, you can use the file that I showed in my first video and you can measure from the top of your design. I'll show you, let me turn the laser off. So if it didn't work and it didn't auto measure, you can grab the laser head and pull it to the, right over your tumbler. And you can use this and measure and you can see here that it is just over six millimeters which is very similar to the auto measurement that it gave me. So you can cut this ruler out if it's failing for whatever reason. Okay, so now that my laser's off and you can hear me a little bit better. So where that red dot was shining, I wanna make sure that my design will fit in the area. So say my design is three inches, it will go from the red dot to where the three inch mark is. So you just wanna ensure that you have enough room to make your design fit. Okay, so I'm going to auto measure one more time since I opened and closed the lid and I wanna ensure that everything is still set up correctly. Now let's grab our artwork. So I'm going to click image and then choose my PNG file. The program defaults to measure in millimeters. So just make sure that you, if you don't wanna use millimeters, you can change it to inches. But I feel like so many of the tutorials are using millimeters that I just left it in millimeters. So my design size, I want it to be around two to three inches. So that'll be in the 50 to 75 millimeter range. So you can resize your image. The larger your image, the more time it will take. And then what I do want to make sure that you pay attention to is that we need to rotate our design. So we'll rotate it 180 degrees so that it matches the correct orientation of our tumbler. Now that we have the size that we want, we can align it to this yellow line. So we can push it up against the side and you can see that on the, if we were to process this over here, it would say that the element is placed out of the processing area. So you can only place your artwork on the right side of this yellow line. I think even if you had part of it over, it would say, yeah. So even if I just have a little bit of the edge over, it will not allow me to process it unless I'm on the correct side of the yellow line. All right, so now I have my design placed. My tape is somewhat straight. It's hard to tell because it does curve, but you want this blue tape line to be as straight as possible. The next thing we're going to do is make sure that our settings are appropriately set. So when your image is not selected, you will not see any settings. If you select your image, you have all these options over here. For materials, you can use a user-defined material and set your power speed to whatever settings you want. But I found that the stainless steel necklace settings were very close to what I ended up on. So I have been using these as my go-to settings. And that will turn your power to 100, your speed to 25 millimeters per second, which is pretty slow, so it will take a little bit of time. And then your lines per centimeter are set to 200 lines. If you're using an SVG, you won't see a bitmap mode, but since I'm using a PNG, it just has a grayscale selected. Before we actually send this to engrave, you can do a th process called framing, which is really neat. So you can click process and this will take quite a bit of time to engrave. It actually will take a little bit longer than which what X tool says and you can play with the settings, but I do feel like these settings work so well that I'm willing to have it take longer and engrave longer, a little bit slower so that I get those nice clean engrave results. But before we do any of that, we're going to click framing. Framing is ready, it says, pops up, and then it says press the button on your device to start framing. 
Now framing, when we click the button on the machine, it will shoot down a light and it will trace out where it's going to engrave. So that's completed. I'm actually going to cancel that though because I have one more tip that I wanna show you before we actually start engraving. So we're going to auto measure one more time. And wait, it changed it just a little bit, but zoom in, make sure that everything looks good. And here's my tip. We're going to affect this just a little bit and we're going to change our distance. We, it was 6.5 and we're going to increase it to 7.5. And the reason that we want to do that is because now the laser thinks the tumbler is one millimeter lower. So it's going to be a little bit more powerful. I'm not sure if that's like the correct logic, but with my Glowforge, I often will do something like this. I call it defocusing and it will just smooth out my design. And in this case, I really do think that it cuts away the coating a little bit better because there's more power because it thinks that it's engraving one millimeter further so it's therefore a millimeter more powerful i'm not sure if that logic is exactly correct but it does make a difference so i'm going to change that and then i'm going to process it now with the framing though if you click framing right now since it thinks it's a millimeter further the light that it uses or the laser that it uses to frame will actually make a mark in your coating. So at this point, do not use the framing tool because you will see a rectangle frame around your design if you frame it at this point. So you have to be confident that you've already framed it up and it's good to go. And we're actually going to skip framing altogether and start engraving. Before we start engraving, a couple of safety reminders. Make sure that your exhaust tube is out your window. So I have mine running right out my window. When your laser is running, make sure to only look at the laser from the top view. This is a protective glass. It's colored in a certain way that protects your eyes. So do not look at your laser from underneath or on the sides. Don't be tempted to film your laser while it's cutting because it can also be damaging to your camera sensors or your lenses, similar to how it's dangerous to your eyes. Other safety reminders, don't walk away from your laser while it's engraving or cutting. So I know it's tempting when there's a long job to just walk away. Make sure you stay and are watching your laser through the protective glass so that if anything happens, you're there to stop it and pause it or cancel it. I also have a fire safety blanket right next to my laser. This is just an extra precaution to have if anything goes wrong, I have this ready to go. I know laser safety can be scary, but it's just important to mention that you are well informed of all the different things that you need to do to prepare yourself for an emergency situation. So it's better to be over prepared and over cautious than to be in a situation where you don't know what to do. Okay, so with all those reminders in mind, we're good to start. So we're going to click the button on the front of the machine and it will engrave. Like I mentioned, I can't give you a view from under the laser because laser rays are also harmful to cameras and camera sensors. So don't be tempted to film your laser because it can be damaging to your camera sensors. So you will only get the top view, unfortunately. Can't really see what's going on, but we'll get it started and then I will show you what it looks like when it comes out of the laser. So like I mentioned, you don't want to look underneath your laser at the laser beams. You will see lights coming out of your laser. That is fine as long as you just don't tuck your head up underneath the base to watch those lasers. I also wanted to note that I do have an air purifier in my craft room. I can link this one. It's just a affordable option that I found from Costco. And it does help kind of clear out any of the fumes the smell that comes from engraving tumblers, it's not the worst smell I've ever smelled, but it definitely has a smell. So having a purifier and a fan in your window open does help kind of move those smells out the window. The first time I engraved a tumbler, I stopped the machine because I couldn't see what was happening. 
and it's very tempting to just completely stop the job because it doesn't look like anything's happening. But I'll pull my tumbler out of the laser and you'll see how it looks and we will clean it up and you can actually see the engraved design. So it may not look like your laser is doing anything, but don't worry, it is engraving that coating away. Okay, so the job just finished and I'm gonna gra grab a baby wipe. So this is straight out of the laser. And you can see that there is still the black coating on the tumbler. So if yours comes out of the laser and there's still that black coating, don't worry. All you're going to do is take a baby wipe and just wipe that away. You can even clean this up further with a magic eraser. A magic eraser works really well. Now, what I want you to notice is we talked about the importance of the right side of the tape and where that red dot and that yellow line was indicated. And you can see that's where the design started. So I think that was the hardest thing for me to understand on other tutorials. I couldn't figure out where my design was starting. So once you set that focus, it really does help to understand the line and where it's going to engrave and also having these guidelines. And you can see that it warped around and engraved so beautifully. It was straight along that guide that I set. So you can see that it was in the space that I knew it was going to land in. And I knew that since it was starting here that it wasn't going to go the full width. If I wanted it to be bigger, I could have confidently continued it over to the edge. But since I'm still new at this, I've been doing smaller images to build up that confidence. So here's the tumbler. You can see that this is the newest engrave. It did take a little bit longer than it anticipated, so it was a longer engrave time, but you don't have to do much cleanup, which is why I'm okay with the longer engrave time. So I have my magic eraser and just am going to wipe away the extra black residue. So here's the newest engrave. You can see that it didn't require that much elbow grease to get it cleaned up. Just a baby wipe and if you want a magic eraser, but you don't even need to really wipe that hard. And it looks really good. I really do think that adjustment with the one millimeter where you're moving the focal distance away to kind of trick the laser into thinking it needs more power. That's what I think logically is happening, but I'm not exactly sure, but it does make a difference because before, even though these engraves might look a little bit shinier, this one, I had to scrub, 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 use a power scrubber to get the coating off. Whereas this one you watched as I just wiped it off and I could shine it up to be as shiny as this one with a little bit more elbow grease but I really don't even think you need to because as you wash it, it will just keep on getting shinier. So definitely add a millimeter so that your laser cuts through the coating a little bit better. I also wanted to show you, I talked about not setting the frame on your tumbler when you do change the distance. And I wanted to show you this one. I don't even think you'll be able to see it on the camera, but there is a rectangle on this one where I set the framing because I did change the distance. And I think you might be able to see it on my hearts. There's some hearts that I did it around. I don't think my camera is going to pick it up, but just as a reminder, if you do trick your laser and change the focal height, don't, set the frame because you may get a mark, but even on camera, it's very minimal. I can see it in person. Just, you can see it here. There's two squares around that. So just note that you don't want to add that little extra rectangle, but overall it looks really good. Like I said, you can scrub the black a little bit more if it bothers you. I do think darker colors take a little bit more scrubbing, whereas lighter colors, they cut through, the laser cuts through the coating much easier. 
All right, so I'm losing light, so I'm going to wrap this up. A couple of other features that, that I wanted to mention. This X-Tool roller has a ton of other attachments that you can use to hold your different objects. So um, in addition to rolling objects like you saw in today's video where it rolled this one, it didn't actually show the rolling because it was hard to see, but rolling your object, there's also like a claw attachment that you can put in uh, cups that have a handle so that it can roll around or turn, spin around with the handle out of the way. Um, it also has like different prongs to hold rings or a ball object like a baseball. So it has a ton of other capabilities. I didn't want to overwhelm you in today's video with all of that. I just wanted to show you a basic cylindrical tumbler that kind of had a conical warp so that you could see that it can be done. So in future tutorials, you'll have to let me know what you want to see. I definitely want to engrave on a ball. I think that'd be so fun, but that will take a different tutorial where I'll show you the different configurations of this rotary attachment tool because this tool is a beast. It has so much function and I didn't want to just put it all in one video. I wanted to get to the point so that you could see a basic tutorial. If you are having issues with your settings and you need help figuring out settings, doing a test like this, you can see on this one here, the black didn't even come off. So there are, and if I scrubbed it with baby wipe, I'll show you. It doesn't wipe away. So if you're in a situation where you're not getting good results, the first thing I'd recommend is always start at the 100 power. I think you do need 100 power, at least for black. But if you decrease your speed, so if you're not getting a good result, the first thing I would say is decrease your speed. And I would just go down by uh, 10 millimeters per second. So I was up at 60 to start and I ended up at 25. So it does add time, but you won't be left with a ton of ink on your tumbler. So decrease your speed. If you wanna decrease the time that your project takes, so say you don't wanna spend 50 minutes engraving a tumbler, you can decrease the time by decreasing your lines per centimeter. So I showed you today's project was 200 lines per centimeter. You can drop down to 100 lines per centimeter and see what that puts at you, where that puts you time-wise, but also if you wanna do a test and see how the result is. I like the detail and I decided that I was okay waiting as long as my result was good. So you can play around with the settings. If you increase the speed, it will be faster. If you decrease the lines per centimeter, it will be faster. So if you are struggling and you need help, make sure to leave me a comment and I'll do my best to help you. If you're looking for any of these products in today's video, as always, I will link everything in the video description so that you can easily find it. If you have suggestions for other tutorials, make sure to leave those in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys want to learn. All right, thanks so much for being here and I will see you in the next video.